So why don't we just get back to the show? <gasps> why don't we just? Why don't they oh. just? I was really hoping. I was hoping this is going to be the time that it didn't work. And I don't think it did phone. work. I know. No, I was hoping it, it didn't work. It did work. Anyway, I'm not sure that it did. Uh oh. I hope not, the recording well is just enough. Ben you weren't going, well, I don't they just. There's still too much Ben Sullins in that. Too much. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Too much Ben Sullins <laughs> in that. Anyway, what's anyway. our way to just. <laughs> a bunch of... This week's Why Don't They Just comes from Rasmus oh. in Discord. Thanks for being a part of uh, the, 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 the party there, Rasmus. He says, Why did, since Falcon Heavy was able to launch the Roadster beyond Mars, couldn't it also get a payload to Mars? If so, why don't they just use the Falcon Heavy to launch payload to Mars right now? And he didn't know if anybody had asked this already. So this actually started a big conversation there in, um, in Why Don't They Just Land in Discord. But uh, I thought, <laughs> why don't we just... Let's Answer start it. with let's start with Ben. Why don't we just talk about it? Uh, well, I feel like the roadster they launched was extra extra light. Uh, it sounds like it would be doable with the right payload, but isn't it going to take like a a couple years to get there or something? It's not like yeah. a straight shot like you would want a mission to Mars on. If I'm understanding. Oh, you're talking about what they, the roadster when they put the roadster up there. Yeah, because the thing was totally stripped down. It was just like the shell of the car, right? Like the battery wasn't in it and motors and all that stuff. So I don't think I even knew that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I forget someone posted that online and they were like somebody that worked on setting it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, sounds feasible. But my my guess is that Starship and stuff ought to be here soon enough. And even getting a payload ready for Mars is like a big feat in itself. And so you like, why do it on such a small thing when two years from now or three years from now or however long it takes you just to get the damn payload ready. Anyways, you'll have a much, much, much better option. That would be my guess. Joe. I mean, um, so I, th- I think there's some confusion in in what they did with the Roadster when people say it went to Mars. I mean, it kind of went out to Mars orbit, right? Like it just kind of like went out there. It actually went even beyond Mars okay. orbit by quite a bit. Yeah. But do you think that they have, um, well, this might be a dumb question. Do, do you think that they had the ability with that launch to, uh, you know, be more precise about it and put it exactly where they wanted it? Oh, of course, yeah. They weren't yeah. aiming for Mars very yeah. intentionally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the car was in no way prepared for any way to interact with Mars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess the question is, you know, we just saw a rash of, uh, of Mars launches because we had that window. Um, but obviously nothing went up on a Falcon Heavy, and I guess the question might be, why, why didn't they use the Falcon Heavy for that kind of thing? I'm, I'm guessing because these Mars missions take so many years to plan and get ready and the and the contracts for the launch were already signed years ago and and whatnot that that's probably why in that sense now if you're just asking why doesn't you know elon start launching cargo out there for his future mars civilization that he wants to build you know who knows i mean maybe they maybe they just don't have that stuff ready yet they start sending some some uh what are they called mrgs no the Meals ready to eat. M- MREs. MREs, yeah. Out there. Yeah. At, you guys are... You, that's sort you of both, an answer. Yeah, you both pretty much nailed it. Uh, you know, I've had people ask me, like, well, you know, why can Falcon 9 launch something to the moon? You know, a, a question like that. Literally, tiny rockets can send something to the moon and Mars. Like, the electron can send something to the moon. Just can't send a lot. Yeah. It can send a very small thing to the moon. Falcon Heavy... Falcon 9 could easily send something to Mars. Can it be, is it going to be big? Is it going to be something that people could be on? No. You know, Falcon Heavy can send more than Falcon 9 can to Mars. Um, so as far as the physically can Falcon Heavy send something, of course, 100% is capable of even a, a regular, don't forget when Insight launched two years ago in the 2018 window, it launched on a totally stripped down bare naked atlas five so no strap on solid rocket boosters the lowest performance atlas five and it launched it in a polar orbit so it didn't even get the extra spin of the earth Mm -hmm. and it still made it to mars no problem and that was a pretty decent sized payload Mm -hmm. 
So it's not like, you know, it's not like the, the Falcon Heavy is it's just more, it can send potentially more payload to Mars. Um, now, as far as, you know, what you're talking about, Joe, as far as like why, you know, they sent it. All they're doing is they're just showing off how far they could launch something, how how much yeet they could get on it. And they yeeted that baby out way past Mars. I think uh, like 2 AU or something or 2.5 AU. You can go to whereisroadster.com um, and see exactly how far away it is. Wait, Here, let me, is, is that where's my roadster? I was about to say, there's, now there's where's my roadster. No, there is. <laughs> no, this is where... Where is Roadster.com? This is done by um, a friend of ours, Ben. Not you, Ben. God, how many um, Bens are there? There's so many Bens. <laughs> we know but yeah, them all. The, the, the furthest, look at how much further it went beyond um, mm. beyond Mars's orbit. So Mars's orbit is this red one, and Roadster is on an elliptical orbit between Earth's orbit, which is blue, and beyond Mars. So it's, it's like right. green elliptical circuit, circuit. wasn't there something like it could crash back into earth and it's like in two million years or something ridiculous uh, it could intercept back with earth basically yeah because you Assuming know it, it doesn't get hit by something else in between i mean yeah it's a very very because it, it is still the lowest point is still at earth because it didn't do any maneuvers after it left earth right it's not like it got up to another <laughs> point and then did a mid-course correction or anything like it's not you know they needed so, the spacex package <laughs> Um, so to answer the question of can it, of course, physically a hundred percent and Joe, exactly like you said, if they're, you know, you don't just willy nilly, Hey, now we, this rocket just went online two years ago and it's only launched three times. Mm -hmm. And so first off, you're not going to, these billion dollar missions to Mars, like, you know, uh, perseverance and some of these other missions, those were settled and like known about and all this stuff year, like Seven years ago, way before Falcon Heavy even existed and had definitely before it had flown. And then on top of that, like now it's like, OK, we have it. Sending but, something to Mars isn't just some yeah. trivial like, oh, let me get here. Grab this. Like it's a whole thing. Like it's a <laughs> yeah. big deal. Now, of course, there were talks for a little while about a red dragon capsule. So basically sending a modified dragon capsule using the Super Dracos to land. And although that might be barely technically feasible. Elon said over and over, it's just not the right architecture for Mars. The mm. the body shape of capsule like that on Mars is actually not at all very ideal because it's it's really it's not enough surface area. Mars is so thin atmosphere, it's better to have a bigger, almost like a space shuttle would actually be pretty great for entering Mars because mm -hmm. it kind of glide oh, because, off the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the little bit of atmosphere that there is and 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 do more work. Um, so a capsule is just not quite right and. Um, it'd be that'd be still hundreds of millions of dollars to frivolously send something to Mars, you know, like with very yeah. little because the capsule itself would be super probably so heavy. You wh what could you do with it? You might be able to like open the hatch, have the hatch automatically open it and like roll out a small lander or something. But like, I don't know, it's not mm -hmm. really so they canceled it, it because they're just like, we'll get Starship up and running, just like what Ben said. Like, Starships were close enough to Starship that is tangible that in the next Mars window, we might actually. Be able to launch something to Mars. Isn't the uh, the helicopter flying now too? Well, it's it's on its way there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was already there. No, it's that just launched. That's a that's month ago. on Perseverance. What yep. it has its name though? What's what's the name? Ingenuity. Of it? Ingenuity. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So it's it's happening, but yeah. Um, those that's a good question. So basically, the answer is yeah. Um, it, of course, it can send something to Mars, but it hasn't been around long enough to be proven enough to be signed any contracts with anyone. Um, any agencies or anything to do anything to Mars and SpaceX isn't willy nilly just going to throw something at Mars just for the fun of it. Cause that's yeah. still a billion dollar. I'm ordeal. still wondering, I'm still wondering about, I mean, maybe it's just not even totally feasible yet, but a lot of the ambitions with space and Mars and these things, it sounds so much like just manufacturing stuff in space with materials that are acquired in space are going to be a so much better option. Like, just considering the cost of the Delta V to get something off this planet Earth. to yeah. space is stupid. It's so expensive yeah. that if you could get those materials from an asteroid or whatever, the moon. it yeah. sounds like that would be just way more economically viable to build a massive ship that could go out to Jupiter or something, you know what I mean? Yep. Whatever, like one mm -hmm. of these spinning things with gravity oh, and all that like it just yep. doesn't seem like the right move sustainably to just keep sending up materials from here so 100%. is, is yeah. blue origin the company that's tr that's kind of i don't know spearheading the effort to get space construction or heavy industry in space yes 
Yeah, that's that's Jeff Bezos's big like yeah. his big push is he thinks heavy industry should be moved off of Earth, and mm. you treat Earth more as a sanctuary, more of a a preserve almost. Um, and that's actually, I mean, if you think about the future of that, like imagine if we didn't have heavy, you know, smelting and like even energy production was all done basically off Earth, and then Earth was just like this place where you had to have fully renewable energy. All of these things, and then, you know, I don't know how exactly you always get things back down from Earth without, you know, like, producing a lot of problems, too. Um, and this is destroying the ozone with every massive cargo ship re-entering the Earth's atmosphere it, and stuff like that. But That's something yeah. I've thought about for a long, long time is, and I'm sure, I think, Joe, you probably mentioned it once before, there's, like, this concept of, you know, we don't get shipments of materials here on Earth very often. Right, like the dinosaurs got one and it kind of didn't go so well, right? But like, there's not, there's not things coming here renewing supplies and things mm-hmm. that we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anything, we've probably sent more stuff up than than we've ever got back. But it, it's an interesting idea that we could we could yeah, because like, if you can grab an asteroid and look at the water and all the metals and all the things on there, and refine it to something usable and just send it down, that would I. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that that kind of uh, system would fundamentally change like our existence on this planet, mm-hmm. right? It's it, it's like you're going to Costco and you like get an Earth-sized shipment of stuff, yeah. where right now everything we have here was made from other things that were already here. Yep. So, the exception of sunlight, I guess. I had to look this up, but when you okay. said that that we're probably launching more stuff into space than has is is coming down in, in forms of like meteorites and whatnot. Yeah. I know there is a substantial amount of space dust that enters our atmosphere on a regular basis. Um, just looked it up. According to Universe Today, uh, it says, um, uh, okay, it says, estimates vary of how much cosmic dust and meteorites enter Earth's atmosphere each day, but range anywhere from five to 300 metric tons. Oh, it's a lot. A day. A day. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine if those yeah. could be uh, uh, things that are already usable, right? Because like, what is space like dust and meteorites? Up in space? Well, I mean, yeah. If you could like take that space dust and take those meteorites and and wrangle them up and turn them into steel or whatever, something that we then would use for building materials or things like that down here, it would just fundamentally shift like how we as humans live here, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be like, oh, we need to make this thing. Cool. Let's like send up a little message to the manufacturing thing up in space and have them, you know, send it down in, in a, a year well, or something. I think definitely once we have, you know, autonomous manufacturing capabilities, like we could have these containers in space. We had that we had the shipping containers last week, but, you know, <laughs> to have just yeah. robots just making stuff up there. Right. Either with, you know, uh, resources from an asteroid or from the moon or from whatever, and then just kind of like sending it down to Earth. I think that would also, um, the zero gravity environment or the microgravity environment would allow for stuff that we can't quite do here. Human organs, Or it would take less energy just because every single time something is lifted, it's not, it doesn't Mm -hmm. take hardly any energy to lift it up up in space, whereas here it's, you know. Yeah. Anyway. There's a case Um, to be made for it. It's an interesting, it's an interesting topic. Well, and one last thing on this little bit is that when I was doing that video on the p- rocket pollution, one of the things that I just started to touch on was the bigger concern almost, even with like a hydrogen rocket, is when it is starting to re-enter the atmosphere and enter the atmosphere that it, it does, um, that we could easily uh, double the amount of ozone damage compared to natural as- uh, asteroids at like... I don't remember how many flights it was a day, but it was a, it was a tangible number of like, mm. oh, if Starship starts doing point to point and and creating plasma in the atmosphere constantly, that that actually that can destroy ozone mm. and we can have a whole other ozone crisis if we actually are flying as often as like a commercial airliner. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member where you'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.